Welcome, Kevin. Thanks so much for coming. Could you tell me a little bit about what you guys do at Onfido? Sure. We are an identity verification company, and what we help businesses do is be able to onboard new customers in a digital context. And so you can think about creating a new bank account or becoming an Uber driver or any of those scenarios where you need to prove who you are in order to get access. We provide technology and services that help companies do that. I notice there's a few Uber people uh, who are attending tonight, so <laughs> they're obviously interested. Yes, <laughs> so what's your personal vision of, I'm sorry, what's, what do you see personally as the most important thing at the moment as regards digital identity and security? Because obviously both those come together. Yeah, I think we're at an inflection point. And if you think about what's going on in the last five or 10 years, especially in the last couple years, is the current system of doing the things I talked about and just generally um, authenticating people's identities has been through what I call a database model. Look up my information in a credit bureau, see if it's Kevin Trilly. Great, you're on your way by answering a couple questions. That data now is all compromised. Yeah. So now we have to shift to a new model. And to go to the model that we want to go to requires a lot of fundamental changes to the current system. So we're in an inflection point, I think is the best way to think about that, where we're going to hopefully get to this next step level of an identity solution where we actually can control our data, we actually own our data, and our data isn't sitting in some honeypot that can be attacked via network attack anywhere in the world. And, and it's sort of a, an identity nirvana, and the question is really the steps that we, want, we need to take from being practical right now to this ecosystem. It's gonna require a lot of participation by private sector, by public sector, by technology companies, by the phone device manufacturers. This is it, the, the, we're, we can't use, my identity I've given up on personally. It's all taken, it's all hacked. My healthcare data, I've gone through all the, 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 the list of uh, companies that have been hacked, I've been involved with every one of them. So what's next, yeah, right? Yeah. I've got my face, I've got my fingerprints, I've got those things as my basis. Yeah. Now how do we build into the next system without getting that compromised? And that's gonna drive a much more real-time system. Every time I need to go to a, uh, try to access a system or create a new account somewhere, you're gonna have to come back to who I am as a person right. in some way, shape or form. So this is the opportunity space. I think yeah. it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity. It's going to force us into that next state. Right. Fantastic. Yes, because in the end, we are humans. <laughs> we aren't phones. <laughs> um, and so what's your personal vision of where we're going in the future? Like, what would you like to see or what do you think will happen? Yeah, so starting from, I, I like to think of it as an identity life cycle. So it all starts with what I call identity creation or account creation. You're starting to create your first service online, whatever it may be and you need to take your physical identity into the digital world. I would like that controlled and stored by a device that I take around with me all the time, right? So why do I use my phone? I love going to Europe. You go to Europe, you never pull out your wallet. You're always paying with your phone, you're Bluetoothing everywhere, Apple paying everywhere. But yet the minute someone asks you for identity, ah, oh, wait a minute, I gotta get this big heavy wallet out and pull out this, this piece. Yeah. So the first step, it's gotta be stored in a device that we, if you look through the streets of San Francisco here, Everyone's walking around with that thing chained to their wrist. Yeah. That needs to become your identity container, your wallet, whatever word you'd like to use. And then from that, you wanna make sure that that can be used ubiquitously in a very easy way. So then you have to have the mechanisms just like the payment systems that are now hitting scale, the same thing for an identity system where you can automatically go buy a beer at a supermarket without having to pull out your wallet. You can unlock a car by just doing a facial scan of yourself and go rent a car without talking to an agent. You can go through an airport without talking to anybody and be very conveniently you know, progressing through those lines and queues. So I think that's all that needs to, to go, but you need the enabling technology layer. You need it yeah. stored on every person right. while the devices have caught up, so that can happen. And now you need this whole network of users to be able to accept it. I'm sorry, of relying parties to accept that identity from the users. So those are the pieces that need to be put in place. Each one of them has some complexity to build that out, layer them, and then have them all co-work together as a, as a network. And that's what we need to build. So what you're saying, your vision is that we'd still be relying on phones um, because my concern is after being SIM swapped twice sure, sure. within a couple of weeks, I'm like, we should not have to rely on the phones. Well, so there's, there there's other the options? phone and then there's the device. Okay. So I guess what I'm saying is the wallet is now a digital, I have a wallet and a phone. Those are my two back, my back pockets. Right. So right. why do we have a wallet anymore? And then, yes, you're right. Once we have it in this mobile device, and I'm not using the word phone necessarily, okay, okay. at that point, you need to secure the transmission and management of that identity. It doesn't go out all the time. You know, yes, there are, there are vulnerability points everywhere. Massive. 
So the way your SIM got stolen was through some social engineering somewhere and then some network attacks on databases. Those problems will always be there and have to be solved. Mm -hmm. But at least it gets me, I, I would love a point where I can say, I'm going to share my information with this business and only the information they need might be meta information about me. I'm an adult versus my full birthday, as an example. And then that data goes away after it's done being used transactionally. And you know, those are the kind of things that we need to get to because it'll at least stop maybe for my kids' generation, their data going everywhere and then their data being hacked. I honestly don't think it can change for me. I think what's gonna change for me is we're gonna, I'm gonna be more inconvenienced because they need real-time verification of me now because my data is compromised. I'm a higher risk person because I've got compromised data. So in that case, you wanna control better controls around what data I have, and then maybe do a little bit more in-person verification of myself. And I think if we're, if we're relying on devices that are controlled by uh, mobile carriers, then we definitely need to re-educate them because I was butting heads with T-Mobile and I'm still shocked and horrified, even though now I'm on a SIM swap protected account, the rest of T-Mobile is not. And I wondered why and why they're not taking this seriously um, because one of my panelists was sim swapped soon after me. Um, Interesting. So, you know, this this seems crazy and these people, I guess they, they figure, well, we never thought phones would be authorization devices. That's why we don't care. We just want to keep taking your money. But, you know, someday they're going to have to wake up and be re-educated, re correct? Well, you look Any at, ideas? yeah, I think you look at the pools of where our data, our digital identity sits, and you've got, obviously, you're talking about your, your mobile identity. We all have email addresses. We all have browsing histories. We all have, you know, IP addresses and locations and all that together all has, each one of those has threat vectors that need to be addressed. Yeah. So the fact that it's digital just assembles those and makes them more vulnerable to network-based attacks, meaning remote access. Okay. So it's where they're stored. Each one of those will still have to be individually secured. It, you know, that, that won't go away. So I don't, I don't think the SIM attack and really allowing me to store my stuff in a phone is really the same threat vector. It becomes more, when you combine them, you now have more risk. Okay. But it goes back to then, how do you access that? It should be unlocked with a biometric, yes. right? Someone shouldn't just be able to remotely like log into it. They should yes. go back and go, I need a real time verification of Kevin. So yeah. let's have him look in and verify his face or something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to educate these <laughs> these carriers Absolutely. because they don't care. They just want to keep taking our money and they don't care about all this other stuff. So, look, I really appreciate um, you coming and I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic panel. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks for having me and look forward to the panel.